If you want to cast something from your Linux machine to a Chromecast that is connected to your TV, there are a few different ways that you can go about doing this. Now, since there's a variety of methods that all have different abilities, different pros and cons, it's important to ask, what capabilities are you actually looking for in casting? Do you just want to cast websites uh, like YouTube? Do you want to be able to cast videos? Or do you also want to be able to cast whatever is on your desktop to the TV? Now, the easiest way, the just works method of casting that I found is to simply install Chromium. You might have this already if you're using Chromium as your web browser. If you go over to the three dots that are here, click this to expand that menu and a little bit more than halfway down, you'll see that there is this cast button. So if you click that, it's going to say cast tab. And then here you're going to have all of the different Chromecast devices that are on your network listed here. And it will resolve the names for you. You can just click whichever one it is that you want to cast to. Um, so by default, it says it's casting tab. So if I click on my Sony TV, then what you're going to see is now this Chrome tab is being cast onto the TV. Uh, so that's a good option for casting. And since it's casting the tab, you can go to a video site uh, and cast that. So for example, if I go to YouTube, and then I could cast, you know, whatever is on YouTube here. Now you will get this that pops up if you're actually using YouTube. Uh, that says that you're signed out and then it's going to want you to sign into your computer to get around that. Um, this doesn't happen with embedded YouTube videos though. So like if you really, really want to avoid signing in, uh, you can just do that. You can just embed it on a random web page real quick. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a real web page. Like it can be just an HTML that's uh, on your computer and then you can play it that way. And again, since it doesn't do this on any embedded videos, if you're on Reddit or some other website that displays that's embedding content from other sites, then you're going to be good to go. You're not going to get that sign into YouTube warning. You can also cast files that you've downloaded to your computer, uh, to and in Chrome as well, or to your Chromecast rather. Uh, I got to refresh it since I'm on a new tab now. So now if I go Sony TV, so you'll see that this pops up and now it's able to play on my Chromecast. And you also have all the video adjustments available. So you can mute it, you can adjust the volume here. Uh, you can make it full screen. That's most likely what you're gonna want to do. And then of course, play it and pause it. Now keep in mind for these files, they do have to be an MP4 file extension and they need to be created with the H.264 or the AAC audio codecs. If the video is encoded with H.265, then it's not gonna work with Chromium. Also, if it's an MKV, it won't work with Chromium, but you can resolve that by just renaming the file to have a .mp4 file extension, and as long as it has the correct codecs, it's going to work with Chromium. And also, this might just be my experience, but I oftentimes don't get the best quality when I'm casting files from my T or from my computer to my TV this way. A lot of the time, the video is going to look like it's a 1080p upscaled on the 4K TV when the video is supposed to be 4K. And this is even true for things like Blu-ray rips, right? They're you know several gigabytes, maybe a dozen or more gigabytes in size, and they obviously have much better quality than a YouTube video. And again, I know for sure it's supposed to be 4K, but it just doesn't look that way on the TV. And these videos, they also stutter a bit more. It's not unusual to have one or two hiccups on a 30 minute plus 4K video. Now, I don't know if this is just a thing with my network. I don't think so because there's other casting methods that I'm going to show you that don't have these same kind of problems. Uh, but yeah, these are some limitations that I have with Chromium uh, when it comes to casting. Now, finally, uh, in addition to casting individual files, you can just cast your entire desktop. So if we go down to cast and then we choose cast desktop, and then click on the Sony TV. You're going to get this uh, screen that pops up that 
basically ask you to choose which monitor it is uh, that you want to cast from. So I'll choose screen three. And now you should be able to see my desktop on my TV. Now, there's only a few situations that I can even think of where you might want to do something like this. Um, you know, maybe if you're doing a presentation and you've got access to like an 80 inch TV somewhere and you want to just be able to show people that stuff on your computer, uh, it might work for that. And I guess if you're really desperate, you could use this as a workflow. Like if you don't have any other monitors available to you and you don't have an HDMI cable, which is what I would recommend doing instead, uh, because when you're casting it, there's quite a bit of latency. Uh, in my experience, it's probably around six to 800 milliseconds of latency between me doing something on my desktop and then being able to see it on the TV. Like I could literally move an icon on my desktop and then turn my head around, not even super fast, and then see my mouse doing that movement. Uh, so this is going to be a no-go for any type of real-time gaming where you would, especially if you were to get something like a 144 hertz monitor, you know, uh, real-time shooters, first-person shooters, stuff like that, not, not gonna work. Um, or any type of workflow, really, that just requires you to be able to see what you're doing in real time. So next up is VLC. And this is probably the best method for casting videos that you've downloaded to Chromecast. Uh, it's already a pretty good video player all, all on its own, so chances are you already have this on your computer. Uh, if not, you can download it. It's Linux, Windows, and Mac OS compatible, and it's available in almost every Linux distro's repository, so you don't have to fiddle around with GitHub or anything like that to get it working. Uh, so to cast a video to Chromecast in VLC, you can simply drag and drop a video that you want to cast into VLC, and it's going to start playing in VLC on your monitor, but then you just come up to Playback, Renderer, and choose your Chromecast device, and it should populate with the name up there. So then you're going to get this uh, orange cone in VLC, so it's not gonna actually display the video in real time on the monitor to you, but it's going to be displayed on your TV. And you can also just double click on the file to start playing it if VLC is your default audio player. You don't necessarily have to uh, drag and drop it into the program. So like I said, with this option of casting, the videos are much higher quality. I don't really get as much stuttering with VLC as I do with Chromium. The 4K videos are actually playing in 4K. They're not a lower resolution. And there is the added benefit that VLC can do on the fly conversion of the files to the proper format. Because you might have noticed uh, with this uh, particular file, really all the files in this directory, uh, they're MKV, so you can't just play those in Chromium. Uh, they're not going to work. They're going to have screwed up audio if they play at all. But VLC, it goes ahead and it does that conversion for you in real time. And in my experience, it hasn't really affected the playback of the videos at all. It, when it's an MPV, it plays just as smoothly as if it was an MP4 with the proper codecs. Now, the downside that I found with VLC is that you don't have the same type of controls that you do in Chromium. Uh, for example, you can pause the video, you can play back the video, uh, you can kind of click through the timeline and stuff like that on the video, but you don't actually have any power over the audio. So like I can mute it, unmute it, and this isn't going to do anything for the video. So if you're going to cast using VLC, it's probably a good idea for you to keep the TV remote handy because that's the only way that you're really going to be able to affect the audio. The final casting method that we're going to look at today is cast all the things. So this is a command line program. Uh, probably going to be the most minimal way of doing the casting and you can download it from the github that's here I'll go ahead and list it in the comments section as well 
Uh, so you can see with the installation, it's pretty simple. Just download it and then pip3 install cat, and then you'll have access to it in your command line. And the actual syntax for casting is just cat, and that's with two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, cast, and then put the URL of the video that you want to cast in double quotation. So go ahead and try that real quick. And let's make my terminal a bit bigger. So C-A-T-T, -T, cast, and then the video URL. And it just takes a couple of seconds for it to turn over on my uh, TV. And then it's able to start playing it. Now you can also control the video from the command line as well. Uh, so you can see, I think it listed here in the readme. Uh, if not, we can see it in the terminal. So if we do cat help, so you can see there's um, a pause. So like if you do cat pause, that's going to pause the video. And then cat play would just play it back. You can scan through it, you can rewind. You can also control the volume with this, uh, volume down, volume up. Uh, I would say that it's still probably better to control the volume with the remote for your TV uh, because you know if you're going to do like cat volume, you gotta kind of do it over and over again to adjust it unless you're going to script something like this out. Uh, to make it easier to maybe just press like one or two buttons to do it. And you can obviously do that since it's a command line program, makes it really easy to script it. Now there are some downsides to cast all the things as well. Um, the biggest ones that I found is the fact that it basically works the same way as if you have the YouTube app on your phone and you're casting videos from that. And the issues there is number one, if you're not signed in, and I don't even know how exactly you would sign in with Cat. I'm guessing you would have to be signed in on your Chromecast, uh, which you don't need to do in order to cast videos to it. But here you end up getting an age restriction if you're not signed in to the Chromecast. So that's a downside to Cat. And another downside is, again, since it pretty much works the same way as a YouTube app or you know any type of YouTube device casting to it, you end up getting ads on the videos as well. Not a whole lot. Like usually when I cast videos either from my phone or to cat, I usually don't get a lot of mid rolls, but you still get ads before the video. Um, so those are a couple downsides. Now the best method I've found for casting age restricted videos, which also has the benefit of not getting ads on your videos is to pipe the output of YouTube DL into VLC. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you an example of that. This would be the command. And what this does, for those of you not familiar with YouTube DL, is this get URL format best. It's going to get the exact URL uh, of this video that should, in theory, be the best quality for it. Uh, and this URL just basically acts like a token for that. So it has like your public IP address in it on some other information that basically points to this particular video and it's just piping that into VLC. So I can go ahead and run that. And for the first couple of seconds, it does display uh, that token on the screen, but then you can go ahead and um, just rewind back and it's not gonna show up. So now this is playing, this is basically streaming a video from YouTube DL into VLC. And then since we are in VLC, we can go to our renderer, select the Sony TV, and then this is going to come up with that YouTube video showing up on the TV. Now, there is a downside to this, which might just be an isolated incident, um, but a lot of the time when I pipe YouTube DL into VLC, it's not, it's not actually picking the best format. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys what I mean. Okay, so if I do this, this is basically gonna grab all the different formats for this YouTube video. 
And you can see the best one that it's picking is 1280 by 720, when in reality, this is a 4K video. So these WebMs here would really be the best options. Uh, I don't know why these aren't being selected as the best. Maybe it's because they're a WebM, but even then there's an MP4 version here that is 1920 by 1080 and it's still picked this one instead. Um, so, you know, maybe it's just a thing with my version of YouTube DL. I think it's outdated on this machine. Uh, so as long as your YouTube DL isn't acting up, you should get good quality casting because Again, as we saw earlier, VLC is capable of casting with very good quality, so it's not a limitation there. Uh, this is just a hiccup that's happening with YouTube DL. But anyway, that's it for casting videos on Linux. Let me know what method you guys are gonna use for casting if you're not using one already. And if you are using something else besides what I showed in this video, let us know your methods in the comment section down below. Anyway, have a great rest of your day.